Man, thank you for joining me today, man. I appreciate you so much, man. Thank you for having me. Thank I you very find... much for having me. No, no, I, I find you very interesting, man. Uh, you know, reading your bio, following you on Instagram. And um, I know you've been on some travels in the past couple of weeks, few weeks, you know. I definitely want to hear about that. And you have your book coming out as well. <clears throat> yeah, the, the book is out. There you go. You see it, people. <laughs> awesome. I like that. That's it. Beyond the prison of beliefs. So introduce yourself uh, to, to, to the audience so we can get a feel for, for you, man. Uh, okay. So um, I basically uh, graduated 10 years ago from, from the American University of Kuwait. Um, I finished my master's. Um, in business administration, and then um, I focused on, you know, um, reading more about comparative religion, um, digging deeper into the interpretations of, um, you know, um, religion and uh, spirituality and uh, its relationship uh, with science. So um, I discovered a lot, you know, and, and um, I have I have mixed opinions about um, so many different controversial topics sure. uh, that I would sure. like to share with you today. Um, sure. Yeah, we're gonna get to all that because um, I guess my first question for you right now would be: Do you believe that we have interpreted religion wrong from from the start? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I personally believe that um the scriptures itself are not wrong like like um re religion in itself is is not wrong there are so many truths held in the scriptures of, of the holy books whether it's in uh, islam uh, christianity uh, judaism um but the interpretations of of those books um have certainly um, led humanity astray, you know, and, and uh, it has certainly led to so many divisions, wars, hatred, and this is not what religion is supposed to be about, right? Like every single religion preaches unity, love, peace, and what went wrong exactly? Like what, what happened? What, why do people um, tend to, you know, um, glorify the religion and, and, um, try to put down every other religion, um, something was off, you know, which made me look deeper into um, comparative religion and the cases and, and, and the holy books and scriptures. And I read so much and I found so much, um, which compelled me to, to, to write this book, you know, and, and clarify so many points that people might misunderstand. Now, with religion itself, you know, the, the, you say it's definitely interpreted by man, but it's also written by man. And it's been written for so long ago, and because the language is especially coming from, you know, religion is the basis of the, the Middle East, and then you translate it, you translate it into an English form, it's way off. And they kind of use filler words for whatever they couldn't understand or try to make up in some of these, these scriptures. Is that is that right? Yeah. So so, it, it's not just it's not just the translations that may have been misinterpreted, but but the actual interpretation in its own language might have been um, translated in, 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 um, um, in a completely, I don't want to say wrong, you know, I'm, uh, at the end of the day, I'm not a religious scholar, but um, we all have brains, you know, and, and uh, we, we can all, we can all um, read. And, and in fact, this was the first word that was, um, mentioned in, in the Quran, you know, it's, it's read, you know, you have to acknowledge yourself, you have to um, use your brain in order to interpret yourself. And, and if you're not going to be able to do that, then um, what's the whole purpose of following blindly if, if you're not going to use your brains and, and interpret yourself? Um, so my point is, um, there are lots of different interpretations in, in the holy books that 
could go so many different ways. They could go so many different ways. And, and um, dictating one way um, in going about religion is, is not entirely, um, it's, it's, it's not the right way to go about things because we haven't unlocked every single interpretation, every single word, you know, that these scriptures um, hold. And, and um, the fact that it was written by man is true, but was it dictated by man is, is, a, is an entirely different story. And I have that, that I'm going to discuss with you and like how these revelations came about in the first place. You know, it's, um, it, it's quite controversial, but yes, I do agree that it was written by man. And I do agree that it was um, interpreted by man. But how were these messages um, sent across? Like, how, where did they come from? Right, right. How, how, how did they receive them? Absolutely. How did, who received them and how did they receive them? No, absolutely. I totally agree with that. Because I, I, I see that religion has, well, I want to say people have tried to become bigger than religion. You know, they, they've made it to where it's monetized, right? They, they've made it bigger than what it needs to be. It, I, especially coming and staying in America, and I live in the South now, I'm really from New York, and the South is you know, it's, it's called the Bible Belt. And the Bible Belt is heavy religious, but it's not very spiritual. They, 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 they're reading the Bible, they, they go and buy what the book says, so per se, right? Again, based off the interpretation, based off the um, denomination they're following. Even with prayer, prayer is, is, is very much so like meditation, almost like an energy source that you're going to be putting out there, right? But a lot of Christians tend to ask for, uh, they do prayers and they ask for things instead of actually just kind of maybe sending the energy to someone else, right? Um, for me, religion has always been a question. I grew up as a Catholic, and I, I shied away from it very, you know, very you know, quickly because when I became a teenager and I just found so many things that was conflicting from the Bible they, they gave me to what they were actually presenting in the church. Mm-hmm. It was totally different. Um, and I just wasn't connecting to it. I just didn't understand, especially when I was reading Ezekiel, the first couple of paragraphs, he sees something coming from the sky, he describes. You know, it, it was just like so many things that made no sense to me. I was like, okay, this Bible is supposed to be about God. We're well, describing some being, you know, talking about there's a chariot with, with, with smoke and flames coming from it. You know, they didn't have a word for spaceship back then. <laughs> you know, so what were they seeing? Were they on some psychedelics as well? It, that's possible. You know what I'm saying? So it's a whole bunch of things you have to look as far as, again, like you said, how they received the information, where they get it from. And um, when people, I guess, another generation did find these scrolls, what mindset were they in when they read it? Mm-hmm. So true. So true. These are all legitimate questions, you know, and, and um, I, I don't blame you for, for, for what's um, happening, you know, and, and um, y- you know, the problem, Johnny, is, is the, the, the element of spirituality has, has been removed from, from religion and, and it, it's been made political, you know, it's, uh, religion has been made political and, so. and, they, they 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 use it as a weapon to instill fear into people, you know. And, and I I don't understand the agenda, but um, th- there's there's a war against consciousness, and religion has been used over centuries, you know, to to um, l- lead people astray, not not away from religion, but away from spirituality, which is the purest essence of you know, religion, spirituality. And, and if, if you get to remove that element from religion, then what you have left, it's just a bunch of words, you know, that you, you can't really relate to. So um, um, there are lots of different concepts and theories because y- you, 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 you'll, find, you'll find a lot of, um, you know, analogies in, in religion, a lot of fantasies, a lot of bedtime stories, you know, a lot of, a lot of things that we can't really relate to. So when you look deeper into that um, and its relation with, um, you know, psychedelics and, and plants and, and, and all the um, um, 
substances available in, in, in nature, um, you will find a lot of commonalities um, and a lot of bridges, you know, between, you know, those plant medicines and how um, religion or spirituality came about in the first place centuries ago. Um, have you heard? Have you heard of a substance called DMT, Johnny? DMT? Yeah, I have heard of DMT before. Yeah. What makes DMT special is um, that it's produced by by the brain. You know, it's it's produced by the penile glands and several other uh, vital organs in, in, in the body. You know, um, but it's mostly produced by the brain, by our own bodies, and um, it, it, DMT is basically short for dimethyl tryptamine, and um, its function has has been um, quite ambiguous, but um, a lot of studies, especially um, ones that um, were made in Johns Hopkins um, and um, a lot of studies also done by Dr. Rick Strassman uh, in the University of Texas um, about, you know, the purpose of, of DMT and its functions. Um, DMT, in, in short, you know, is, is responsible for um, dream states. Um, near-death experiences and um, a lot of um, mystical experiences uh, encountered by by so many people and you know some of these plants contain DMT and and, and um, when when consumed basically it magnifies um, your contact with with you know these extra dimensions and, and other realms, you know, and, and um, um, you would tend to relate, you know, to the fantasies and the stories uh, mentioned in the holy books after you consume such, such, um, such substances. Um, but um, th there is, there is definitely a very interesting connection between DMT and, and, um, and all the religions um, and it's definitely going to, um, um, you know, um, open your eyes to a spiritual realm um, and make you relate more to, to the religions that we know of. And this is where they refer to you as a third eye. Is that correct? Absolutely. Uh, you know, in, in, in yogic, yogic philosophy, um, they... Um, basically refer to um, the penile gland as uh, the third eye, you know, or the crown chakra. This is where, you know, um, the spirit molecule is produced. Um, and um, there's a very interesting fact about that, you know, and, and, and uh, uh, the D DMT is actually produced after 45 days um, when you become an embryo in, in your mother's womb. It, it, it's it's actually start getting produced after 45 days. And this is the exact number of days where um, gender is, is determined, you know, so whether you're a male or a female, I, I know it's a whole um, different issue in, in the States, you know, when it comes to <laughs> yeah. the gender now, it's, uh, but I mean, um, it, it's, it's like, Biologically speaking, you get to, you can identify whether the embryo is, is a male or, or a female after 45, after 45 days. And that's the exact number of days where um, DMT starts getting produced in the penile, in the penile gland. So, um, hence a lot of um, religions, um, you know, say that it's it's forbidden um to to um like abortion is, is 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 forbidden you know after 45 days right this is where all the theories came from now you did mention other dimensions and even in in native american culture you know they they've they've taken either either they found cannabis from back in the day or they were doing some type of other psychedelic um plant based uh, when they were smoked and they, they got into their spiritual world. And like you said, it's very common amongst, amongst tribes around the world, right? Um, what do you mean exactly entering different dimensions? Okay, so uh, 
this is the fruit basically um, of, of you know this whole conversation because I just came back from from Peru, um, Cusco, Peru, and and uh, I have personally went through um, such experience. So I would love to share that experience with you. But before before I do, I, I would just like to explain why I, I I went through this experience to begin with. Um, Ten years ago in, in, in university, um, I, I had a very close friend um, that went through uh, a near-death experience. You know, he, he, he was basically um, clinically dead for, for a short period of time, you know, and while he was um, showering, he, 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 was, he just fell over and, and um, um, he claims that he, he died, you know, and, and um, the way he explained death was really compelling um to me you know and, and uh it made me look more um um in the whole aspect of of death you know and uh, life after death and near death experiences and all that you know so how 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 he explained it was was uh, very interesting um he, he said that um he went through a, a white tunnel um and he had like a life review where he he, he saw everything you know he, he saw everything he did ever since his um, childhood up until that day. And um, he, he was like observing himself, um, um, judging himself. And um, right after all that, you know, he, he experienced the soul flight. So he, he basically detached or disconnected from his body. And he was like, floating like in the room and um he found himself like laying um on bed and his family members were all around him they were all talking and saying um random things and then they were all very concerned and when he opened his eyes when he finally opened his eyes um he found the exact same family members around him you know all he can recall i mean the last thing he remembers was him falling in, in the bathtub right so what happened between um, um, the bathtub and, 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 and him being uh, moved to, to his room, um, he doesn't recall what happened, you know, and he, he was like unconscious. And um, um, the soul flight and, and all the details of what he heard, you know, and the, what was said in the room, was was all real because that's that's what he told his family and, and his family were, were like um yeah this is exactly what happened and this is what we were talking about which which is no coincidence because um it's not just what he heard but what he saw you know it's uh, um it, it was all just very real to him and, and he's like um towards the end i i i felt like i have touched the fountain of love you know the, the fountain of god and and and, and uh it, it all felt so real heaven heaven and hell felt so real so when he uh when his consciousness came back to him he he changed um the guy changed completely and and um a lot of people that go through near-death experiences they when, when, when they come back uh, i'm not sure if you've heard any examples but when they come back to their consciousness they either um change 180 degrees or um if if they're like let's say um atheists for example or don't believe in god they they it's so profound it's so powerful that this experience makes them re-question reality and and, and uh, um look at things from different perspectives you know and, and um this is exactly what compelled me to look into near-death experiences and you know studies made about near-death experiences and um if you believe in the laws of um attraction uh you would find that the universe will work with you you know if, if you really determined to um search for something you will attract it to you and i i personally believe that i i attracted um to me, you know, lots of different um, information and knowledge about, you know, near near death experiences, and, and um, DMT was was definitely definitely one of them. Um, I found myself like reading a lot of research 
a lot of research about near-death experiences. There's, uh, there's a really special book that um, I would recommend um, to you. It's uh, called DMT, The Spirit Molecule by Dr. Rick Strassman. Um, he basically held um, lots of monitored um, experiments on, on volunteers um, in the University of Texas, uh, where he basically injected or induced uh, DMT into subjects, you know, um, that volunteered, you know, to go through this exper experiment. Um, and the results he reported were just mind-blowing, man. That it was just mind-blowing. Um, all of this compelled me to, you know, write about this subject and um, even try this subject, uh, try this um, substance in order to, to, to be legit, you know, it's um, writing, writing about it is one thing and, and experiencing it for, for yourself is an entirely different thing, you know, and, and uh, this is what I decided to do. That's amazing. Um, it's, it's, really, it's really confusing for a lot of people as far as when they don't understand what spirituality really is. And as far as even with um, talking about God and, and energy and what does that really mean, right? And um, but are they one and the same, right? Um, do we even really understand what does that even mean, the word God? Or is that just a word that we actually created because we just have no other description for our powerful energy, right? Mm -hmm. And that's something that we have to always kind of question and say, and I think we have questioned it in the past, but I think as far as religion goes now, it's kind of, it's kind of paused. They're saying, hey, we're in this current state. Let's stay here. We're able to monetize religion now, which religion was always probably monetized in the past as well. But this is a good ground right here to stay put. Instead of experimenting or, or asking deeper questions like you have and saying, well, what, what are we really here for? That's always the, the, the biggest question, right? Why, what's the meaning of life? What are we here for? Mm -hmm. And through our souls and searching for spirituality, there is an answer through that. And whether your purpose is to be a plumber or not, <laughs> no one knows, but that's up to that individual to find out. Like to, to your point as well, when people do have that in their, their experiences, they see that bright light that they talk about. Um, they do come back as a 180 and, and, they appreciate life more. So that's not going to the day to day of just being a worker bee and just being stressed out about life. Right. And I think that's the problem. We have gotten so caught up with the everyday, our smartphones. I'm talking to you from across the world, you know, which is great, but it's also these, these dynamics that have stopped us from evolving spiritually. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, you know the problem. The problem with, with these plants, um, Johnny, is that you know a lot of people consider it like a superficial form of spirituality. You know, it's like um, a lot of people think you know that it's just because it's like a plant consumed. You know, it's like just the same as marijuana. You know, it's like you're 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 um, you're consuming something. You're having like a superficial um, trip. Uh, and um, a, a lot of people just feel like it's it's a superficial way of you know enhancing your faith or or your spirituality, which which is um, not true because if um, these plants have been used by by so many civilizations way before religions, um, um, it's been used by um, ancient Egyptians and it's been used by Incas. It, it's been used by um, so many different civilizations and, and um, the truth it reveals is is way bigger it's, it's just way way bigger than, than people who haven't tried to claim it to be um, God has no religion uh, let's agree on that you know he has no religion but um, all religions um, were created um, through you know the scriptures and the revelations of all the messengers and prophets to to preach one divine truth um and it's all about unity and it's all about love you know divine love so if, if, if that's if that's the root of all religions if, if that's the ultimate truth of all religions 
then is there is there a right religion in, in that case is there is there really a dominant religion is there um one true religion um or are they just all right you know um if they're all preaching the same truth then um why couldn't we all just agree that they're all right you know that they're, they're like they all have spirituality um incepted in, in, into the core of 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 their scriptures and and, and uh, the exact same truth incepted in their core scriptures um so i really don't understand what happened um why did all these divisions occur why do we um use religion to 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 instill fear hate wars i i really don't see where um where this is going and, and what happened you know um to cause all of these uh quarrels and problems but it comes down to people right for people if i don't like something you're saying that you're preaching or you give to me i can take the parts i do like and make that my own and make that to agree with, with my agenda everybody has agenda for centuries and mm -hmm. if one religion did come along and someone was just in a bad mood one day or their mindset was just screwed up and they're like, no, I don't like this. I don't like what you're preaching. I'm going to do my own thing and have competition because that's what humans do, right? As humanity, we just can't seem to get along. <laughs> that right now, yeah. this is probably the most peaceful time around the world. There's still little pockets of wars here and there and in unsettled places. But um, we've always been at war with each other. We've always been in disagreement because my thing is better than your thing. Mm. That's always been the competition about it. And that's yeah. what it is with religion right now. You know, whether it's Judaism, Christianity, or or any other religion, like, you know, you look at Buddhism, anything else, people are either scared of it because they refuse to recognize or understand it or even study it. If you have a disagreement and you studied it, I'm fine with that. But if you haven't studied anything, and you're just going based off the surface of what you hear around from people who still haven't studied anything, then I'm questioning you at this point and questioning even your belief at this point. Because you have a lot of Christians in America, they may go to church, they're not studying the Bible. Mm -hmm. They're just going every Sunday, they get dressed up, they're kind of clocking in, clocking out. Mm -hmm. it's, and same with every other religion. Yeah. It's the same with religion. You know? It's a habit at that point because that's what you're taught to do. Mm -hmm. but you're not taught in churches to be spiritual. Exactly, exactly. The, the, the whole meaning of spirituality is, is actually uh, lost. You know, people don't really understand what, it, what spirituality is all about. You know, and, and um, you, you've touched on a good point. You know, it's like, who is God? Where is God? You know, it's, uh, these are all legitimate questions, you know, and because... And the, the indoctrinated co concept of God, you know, has been accumulated throughout centuries, and and we just uh, pick it up from from whoever raised us, and and we just uh, take it for granted that God is like an entity up there in the sky, you know, and and we don't really question um, whether that is the case, or whether God is in all of us, or is God the universe, or is He consciousness? Like there are so many different um, possibilities that we haven't um, looked into uh, just because we just um, took for granted whatever was uh, dictated on us. Um, so these are, these are all really important questions. And, and uh, you know, um, DMT reveals lots of, lots of truth. And, and that's, that's why I like, um, um, I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to promote, um, you know, DMT in a way that, you know, I don't want to be saying, uh, hey, people, you know, you should go That's try right. DMT. <laughs> right, yeah. I don't, even though, even though everyone should have the sovereign right to, um, to try whatever they want to try, you know, but um, I don't want to be promoting it because um, it's certainly not for, for everyone. It's, um, it, it, it's really tough work you know on the self um 
it, it's hard labor. It's hard labor, and it's one of the most difficult experiences I've ever been to because it, it it basically imitates uh, a near death experience. It, 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 it it, it facilitates, you know, the, the the induction of DMT in your brain and um, and the experiences and the encounters that you go through is they're they're not easy, Johnny. That they're they're um, you, you get to experience death, you know, you get to face death and face um, so many different uh, truths, unpleasant truths, in order to um, get there and and you know. Um, it's it's you're very difficult. To it is, you know, you're, yeah. you're you're unlocking a lot of stuff you may have locked away, a lot of stuff that you know from childhood to adulthood that you may have kind of just put away in the back of your brain, and you know DMT will release that, and you're actually going to mm -hmm. have to, like you said, these are truths, and it, I think people confuse truths with just being happy, go lucky, and good things right you know so, you know flowers and, and sunshine and the truth is if if you've done some bad things in your life and you kind of suppress that's going to come out that truth is going to come out that that truth mm -hmm. is going to present itself in a form that can you handle it and it's, it's going to be raw it's going to be raw data coming to you at its finest and can you handle it and then from there to your point like dmt is not should, shouldn't be consumed just 24 7 but it is a form of enlightenment after that, right? So after you take DMT, you go through this spiritual journey and you, you see your own particular goods and bads, your own heaven and hell that's inside of you. And you go through this. The outcome should be what exactly is like, how do you move forward and really connect with yourself at that point spiritually and with your mind and body as a whole? You know, everyone talks about, we you know, we're just a vehicle right now in a, in, a, in a spiritual form, right now we have to use this vehicle in the right way. Mm -hmm. And like you said, consumption of DMT will help release a lot of those, those notions you have inside, those questions you may have, or even stories that you have inside of you. But now how do you handle it after the fact? What is your next step? Like, have you done, you decide to go traveling, write a book about it, study it, and really try to find what it means for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um... So what's what's profound about um, the consumption of, of DMT is that you 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 um, you get a very strong sense of purpose uh, right after that. You know, it's uh, you you get a bigger picture of what's going on, um, what reality is all about. You know, the true nature and the true essence of, of human beings. And um, once you tap into that. Um, your your perspective in life changes completely, completely, 180 degrees. Um, and and here here's the thing, you know, it's like um, there there is no there is no downside to consuming DMT. That there is no um, uh, side effects um, whatsoever. You know, whoever consumes DMT will go through hell literally but um by the end of the journey they they will come out with um profound messages uh positive changes um it definitely changes your brain chemistry no doubt about that um but it changes it in a positive way you know it, it, it opens your creativity dimension um it opens your understanding um so many things it bridges understanding and you know lots of gaps be between you know different uh belief systems cultures all the society filters are, are just removed and, and and it's it's um it's profound in that in that sense um i know i personally know a lot of people that um um, suffered from severe clinical depression. Uh, some also suffered from addictions, you know, um, uh, from alcohol, drugs. Um, after one single dose of DMT, one high dose of, of DMT, um, these addictions are gone. Um, it's like you're reborn, you know, and, and, and it's 
crazy how it works, you know, because no, nobody really understands how it works. But it's like you instinctively know what's harming your body. Um, and, and you see it for your own self or for what it really is. So once you come back to your consciousness, you're like, whoa, I was in a different world, you know, and, and what was I doing? Like, um, I definitely need to reevaluate yourself. And, and, you know, the thing about DMT, it, it, it doesn't give you answers. Um, it just sets you on the right path. Um, it, it, it basically um, makes you reevaluate life as you know it. And um, like uh, after trying it, I, I definitely realized I am work on progress. I'm, I'm definitely work on progress. Um, no matter how much you think uh, this is true, it, it comes from a different angle. You know, it's, it's, um, I'll, I'll just go through my experience. You know, I'll share my experience with you and, and, um, see what you take from that you know um basically the dmt is is, is um um available in, in 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 a plant called ayahuasca um it's a vine in in, in uh, south america uh a plant that contains dmt which is um boiled and and mixed with with water and and then consumed, you know, and, and um, after uh, consuming my first uh, ayahuasca brew, um, a lot of a lot of things happened uh, that I could not really explain or put into words. And, and this is, by the way, one of the most difficult things that one one can go through is explaining, having to explain the kind of experience um, right. they went through. And, but I'll, I'll do my best, you know, I'll, I'll do my best to try to uh, relay the message. Um, but in, in simple words, um, after, after, cons after consuming um, the ayahuasca drink or, or DMT, you uh, basically go through phases. Uh, the first phase is, um, you, you know, you know um, it basically scans your body. Uh, ayahuasca goes into your body and it scans your body for all the physical blockages and mental blockages. Um, and um, you, you, you basically purge. Um, I have no idea what you purge because the first two days we, we didn't really eat anything. And um, what comes out of your body is, is, is not normal. You know, it's, uh, you, 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 you vomit like black sticky stuff out of your body. It's, uh, and I have no idea, Johnny, what, what that is exactly, but it could be, I don't know, dark energy, negative energy, um, bad stuff in your body that, you know, were accumulated throughout the years. Uh, but to me, to me personally, I felt like a demon was coming out of my body. And, and, and this is what it felt like. You know, it's a, the definition of, of demon here is, is, uh, is controversial. I know, you know, it's, uh, um, it, it could just be energy, you know, it could just be, you know, the bad stuff stuck in my, uh, in the walls of my stomach. You, you, you never know, but I'm just telling you what it felt like, you know, cause, um, as I was vomiting, um, strange things happened. You know, I, I felt like all these entities surrounding me and, and they, they all like, um, put their hands in my body, you know, and, and, and my back and they were like comforting me. It's, uh, they felt like hands, you know, it, it felt like, um, some entities were, um, trying to support me in, in, in that purge process, you know, and, um, and the minute, the minute I started to vomit, it, it really did feel like a demon coming out of me. And, um, I heard lots of strange voices, you know, like strange sounds and, um, I felt the energy and, and like I said, it wasn't, it wasn't just a normal vomit, you know, it felt like, um, 
part of my being is is being you know is being released it's just coming out of my body and and um with all the voices you know surrounding me the, the voices were really creepy you know it's like like strange voices you know funny voices but it wasn't funny back back then um and the minute you purge the minute you throw up um you feel like a huge burden was just lifted and left your body it's as if a I really don't know how to describe this, but it, it, it's as if you let go of, you know, years of pain, man, years of pain. Um, it's, it's, um, it's, hard, it's hard to explain what, what that was exactly, but um, it, it, it's definitely something, you know, it's, it's definitely something because it kept on going, you know, it, it didn't stop there. It kept scanning for more negativity, negativity and, and, and um, dark energies. And, and I kept purging and I kept, you know, vomiting. And, and at a certain point, you know, between one vomit and the other, uh, there, was, there, was a, there was a huge fight going on, you know, there was a huge battle. And my interpretation um, of that is, your ego basically um, is, you know, trying to resist so much uh, the fact that you are letting go of of its uh, of its essence. Uh, the essence of the ego is being diminished, you know, um, and it's trying not to let go of that. And and it's like telling you, this is who you are, you know. It's uh, don't don't let go of who you are, and. This is this is where ayahuasca, you know, deals with that, and it makes you face that, and it makes you fear, uh, face your worst fears. Um, it's like a tug of war, you know. It's it's um, you, you keep you keep fighting this um, temptation of vomiting, you know, everything out, and your ego is like trying to hold on to it um but you know you do get stuck at a certain point you do get stuck uh you don't want to let go of, of who you are you know it's like let's say pride is one of one of your sinful traits you know and or or lust for example is one of your sinful traits this is part of who you are you know that's 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 who you are um, um letting go of that is excruciating you know it's like letting it's like cutting a piece of your body right, right. um and that's that's how it felt like if not more actually because um it's really hard to explain how it feels but that's pretty much how i i perceive it you know and, and how how it felt like so in, in this battle of you know the back and forth battle of you know the ego trying to hold on to these negative traits and and ayahuasca trying to kick it out um you basically get stuck in the middle in in the worst possible place um i i was personally stuck in like a black hole um like in space pitch black you know darkness complete darkness and this place was really really cold um and it was dark and, and I felt abandoned, you know, and, and um, I thought I would die from hypothermia, actually, for uh, like, it was, it was really cold, even though I was like covered with, with lots of, um, lots of blankets and, and uh, lots of heaters were, were, were switched on. Um, any, any person in my place would, would be sweating, you know, but in, in, in my situation, I, I was like really, really cold. And, this tells you that the mind is really powerful. You know, if it convinces you that um, you're cold, then then it, it doesn't really matter what external factors 
influence you know the the the, the environment you're you're in right? right it's it's what your mind makes you believe and um and it made me believe that i was really cold and i was abandoned and i, I was like in a very 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 bad place you know and i was like i, I was kind of stuck in this in, in, in this position i i didn't i didn't want to let go and and that's when i felt like um a lot of hands started to wrap my body and cover my body and and at a certain point started to choke me you know it's like um i was just called the rope of death you know for for the death of negativity um and and uh that's that's exactly what it felt like i felt like i was dying i literally felt like i was dying um this is where my body started to resist that no this is all i know this is my identity this is um my body um and i'm not ready to let go of that you know and, and this is something you keep hearing a lot from from all the shamans the doctors the psychologists if you ever get a chance to let go just let go but you don't really understand what what they mean when when they say let go you know right um what i understood later by letting go is that you know when you feel like you're going to die just go with it because that is only a it's only an illusion you know it's like um, an illusion created by your mind you know for your ego to exist and this is the only time your ego can thrive you know if, if, if you die your ego has gone so this is the only thing that your your ego will hold on to uh is your human body you know because that's all it knows and what happens after that is completely alien to it so um i i wasn't able to to let go i i wasn't able to or i wasn't ready to to let go just yet so um my experience my first ayahuasca experience my first ceremony ended there um it wasn't pleasant at all but i definitely purged a lot and um i talked with with the shaman the following day um and he was like um um so that the shaman basically he also consumes ayahuasca and, and he gets to see everything in, in, a, in a different way you know it's like he, he he sees all the spirits and all the forces in action you know and and, and um he gets to explain what was going on the day after you know because you're you're um while under the influence, you're not really in a state to, you know, make sense of what's going on around you or to you. Um, so he was like, you have you have a lot of mental uh, mental blockages, mental, emotional, and physical blockages that you need to um, get rid of, and I'll help you do that in, in the following ceremony. And that's exactly what he did. You know, he 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 sang his Icaros and. Um, I don't know, dealt with spirits. Um, I have no idea what he was, was doing exactly, but it definitely worked because the purging was much easier um, the following day. And what happened after the final purge was amazing. <laughs> you, you, you get to experience nirvana right after you... Um, purge all the negativity all what your ego is holding on to it is gone you know so the transition to a near-death experience or or you know transition to death is very smooth and it happens like um just like that you know it's you're not even given a choice like the first night i was given a choice i was given a choice to to either let go or um or come back to my consciousness gasp for air and come back to my consciousness and you will always choose gasping for air and coming back to consciousness because it really feels like death johnny it really feels like you're going to die which is very scary you know it's it's really terrifying you know to just let go and, and surrender to death is not something that you can 
you can do um, if you have the choice, right? Yeah. But the following, but the following day, you get to understand that this is just your ego trying to hold on to dear life, and and um, once you purge all the negativity, all the you know um, dark energy out of your body, um, the transition to death is very very smooth it, it happens seamlessly and i didn't even have like a choice i just lost consciousness and i knew that when i lose consciousness that's that's going to be it like i ran out of breath and that was that was it i, I was going to die i'm dying i was i was dying but i didn't mind it the second day i i didn't really mind it and I lost consciousness. And when I lost, yeah. This is a great story. I just have so many questions. When you first took the DMT, was it immediate? Did it take time? Mm -hmm. um, it, it took like half an hour to kick in, but you can feel it. You can feel it like run through your veins and blood and body you know and, and you can feel it like um working you know the first half an hour you feel like you're sick you're 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 it's just scanning your body for for any physical pain or mental blockages you, you just feel it in action you really feel it in action but you don't you don't really it, it doesn't really take effect at, until half an hour uh, maybe, maybe more, maybe more than that. The, the first, the first day, um, the whole trip took five hours, by the way. Okay. Okay. I was unconscious for five hours. Wow. Yeah. Um, and, and the following day, uh, I was unconscious for 10 hours. So you took it twice back to back. I, I took it twice. Yeah. The following day I, I took it again. Um, and, this time the experience was completely different. It was, it was completely different. Um, I understood what it means to let go. You know, um, I experienced, you know, the, the, uh, um, I experienced ego death. Basically your, your ego dies out. You don't really die. Uh, but you experience ego death. The ego death is, you know, the whole concept of, of you holding on to your, to your body, to your human experience here in, 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 this, um, in this world. And when this happens, you get to experience a whole different dimension, um, a whole different reality. And um, When you use the word dimension, you're saying that to people, what do you mean exactly by dimension? Okay, so um, reality is, is, not, is not really what we see you know it's like it's not anything materialistic that we know of you know it's 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 not anything physical it's not anything solid you know it's all of this is just like an illusion just just the same way we as human beings that we're all like um um we're all one unified consciousness in an eluded sense of separation um we're all the same really we're, we're all made out of the same clay you know but um, we're all made out of the same stream of consciousness but um we have this eluded sense of separation that we're all different we're all separate we're all um uh, unique you know and and uh that's that's not true um so, so that's that's where it gets really hard to explain this other dimension because you know, a lot of people think that you experience hallucinations and it's like visuals, you know, and, and you get to see things that are not real. And, but that's, that's not true because um, what you experience is perfection. You get to experience something that is absolutely out of this world, man. It's so real. It's more real than, than what I feel right now. You know, it's like, it feels more real than me talking to you right now. And, and it's, it's, um, 
the feeling associated with it is, is what's important actually it's it's not what you're going through but what you feel as well because um the whole construct of time just collapses um you you basically um lose your sense of identity um you feel like your body okay so what happens is that you're you if you look at your body you feel like it's melting and it's not melting like plastic you know it's it's you know at first glows and you see like your you start seeing your cells as glowing energy and 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 it starts to merge with you know the universe everything like at first warps and and you just start seeing everything as as you know vibrations and, and energy and like everything starts to you know um mesh and merge and and warp and 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 um you start losing your sense of identity like and and sense of reality like what's what's going on what's happening like everything is melting into this one stream of consciousness um and when that happens your ego still starts to fight that you know and, and it starts to form your body again out of this stream of consciousness it starts to like put it together and then it slips again you know it slips away and and, and this keeps happening until you actually let go and when you let go the feeling is inexplicable you know it's like um your your whole thought process is gone you don't experience emotions um you, you're not really sad you're not mad you're not happy you're not um you, you're, you're just tuned into one stream of consciousness and you get to experience one feeling which is divine love nirvana um the creation of the universe you get to go out there and, and see lots of space and stars and the, the definition of euphoria you know um, it's very hard to explain because you, you get to see lots of like patterns and geometry and 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 um you know you, you get to see how everything fits together how, how everything was created out of this stream of consciousness you know it's like um if you if you blow some air for example you get to see you know um lots of things forming you know like whatever your mind wants to create your mind wants to form um just happens you know it's it's uh, it's very powerful it's really powerful um and then and then i went somewhere um which is um a very interesting place um i basically experienced um you know um have you watched star trek yeah i have yeah uh, do you know do you know when when like they travel in, in in a spaceship and um you go through this cosmic tunnel you know and the speed of light and yeah, everything you around you <laughs> so that's that's where i was you know that's that's where i um traveled and 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 um i was i was like um sucked into this place and 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 uh, found myself in like space with lots of stars and planets and um so i was i was in a place that looked like the moon um and by the way when i when i when i say i i had these experiences or or i had the, these are not these are not visions um it's not like my eyes were open and i was like seeing things you know and i was was you out of body i was yeah this was like a soul flight it was i was somewhere else i was somewhere else johnny I, it was it was not these were not visions they were not hallucinations my spirit my soul whatever what was inside me was not human you know i was not human i completely lost my sense of identity my 
I was I was something else. I was I don't even know if I had eyes. I just knew I was there. You know, I I just knew I was there. I was being you know uh, one with with the stream of consciousness, and I was like observing. You know, it's like you're you're observing, and it seduces you. It's like you keep going in and in and in and you keep getting sucked in and you don't really understand what's going on, you know, and, and you lose the whole concept of time. You just feel like it's eternity. You know, it's like you don't understand what space you're in. Um, there is no time. And um, this is all a human construct. You know, you really get to understand this is all a creation of your human mind. Um, so, um, when I when I went to this place that looks like, you know, the moon's surface, um, I, I started seeing like entities around me. They 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 all surrounded me, and um, they were like trying to fix me. They were like observing something. You know, they were they were like trying to communicate like in a in a language that I don't really understand. It was like gibberish you know it's like that they were saying things that i didn't really understand however i really felt like they were trying to send a message they were trying to you know um relay a message now when you say okay. they did you get to see anything or it was just more of a feeling yeah no i i saw entities i saw entities and i really cannot describe what they looked like but they they were entities i don't know um they looked like aliens um robots it's very hard to explain johnny but i saw i saw something okay it it, it was definitely a two-way communication like now when they were trying to i guess engage with you did you did you feel like you belonged that you was in the right place? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. I, I felt like I didn't want to go back. It, 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 it was so, um, I don't even, I, I can't even find a word to explain the feeling, but I felt like this was home, you know, like, I instinctively knew that this is where we're supposed to be. And, and, and it felt so right, you know, and, and it, um, I, I wasn't scared by the way, like, even though all of this was like foreign and, you know, to the human mind and, and it was like alien and, um, it just felt right. You know, it, it felt like this is where your consciousness would go after after um after dying you know it's it really felt this way and it and it felt like there was these spirits that were trying to communicate something you know a very profound message that i couldn't grasp you know i i i couldn't um i couldn't understand what they were trying to say even though a lot of people um do get the message sometimes they do get the uh they do understand the message even though it's not in the language that we understand, your 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 mind just translates it. You know, it's uh, um, and and some of some of the people in my group, they 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 actually found uh, what they were looking for, and they found their purpose. They understood their um, their their purpose and their existence, and it's uh, they communicated. It was actually a um, a two way conversation. You know, and and. Um, the following day, actually, one of one of our friends, um, we found them like talking in, in, in their language, which was gibberish. It's it's nothing. Like we, he was just talking nonsense. And when he gained his consciousness, we were like, "What the hell were you saying?" You know, he's like, "I was communicating with them. I have no idea what what what, what I was like saying, but um, I was communicating with them, and I I understood what they were trying to say." And to a point, I do believe him because what happened to me, the last thing that happened to me before I gained consciousness was something similar. I encountered the spirit like it, it looked 
at me in the eyes and and it was like it didn't say anything in english or arabic or any language that you know makes sense of but you can instinctively understand what what it's trying to tell you and um it was like you came here you were looking for 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 answers you you got what you're what you came here looking for which my intention was basically are we you know um all one consciousness you know it's like are we one with the universe and this is the exact experience that i got and um this entity was like you you got what you what you wanted now go and never come back you don't have to do this and before you started it, your 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 journey and before you took the dmt who was the ahmed that went there and who was the ahmed that left um okay so um the person i was before dmt um was a person that was very curious to understand this other dimension what's behind the veil um who is god um who are we what's our purpose um what are we here for what am i supposed to do i had so many questions um after coming back i felt like there are so many things that we don't need to know and um the, the there is definitely a purpose to every single person here on this earth there is a deliberate purpose um we 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 might not know the ultimate objective or the ultimate purpose because it, it's 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 very hard to wrap your head around you know the purpose of every single person you know in in, in this world and 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 it's like a massive puzzle piece that you will never come to understand you know the extremity of it but um one thing that it made me um feel is a massive sense of gratefulness to have this human body you know to 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 have this human experience you know i was like because i was like something else man i i was like somewhere else i was something else um and at this moment i realized you know like when when all my human layers were shed away you know i was like i'm really grateful to have a human experience you know i'm i'm really grateful to have whatever i have in my life you know and 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 uh the 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 message also that i that i got from from all of this is that um all religions lead to the same truth you know and and, and it definitely um gave me a different perspective and how i view all the different beliefs you know and what what it leads to and how to bridge this understanding and i kind of know what i need to do right now you know and it's uh do something about the discordant beliefs and 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 uh, cultures and understanding of life as we know it and 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 you know the whole concept of god and uh the truth it's about reality and all that is i i feel like it's my duty now to spread the knowledge that i know and and um doing that through your podcast is is uh is a stepping stone you know it's like it's a start and uh it's definitely uh the path i'm 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 determined to take do you feel like you may get ridiculed from people who um hear your story whether as friends or family or just strangers yeah i'm 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 expecting that uh, i'm expecting that not just from friends or family but from all sorts of people you know all sorts of beliefs and and uh but but 
you know the thing is Johnny that like after after seeing and experiencing what I what I did I can just I can see past all the egos man I, I can I can see when 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 an ego is in action you know it's like it's happening and the way you the way I, I would personally deal with it is not going to be the same um, as before for sure because you know one, one, one thing that uh, DMT or ayahuasca does to you. It, it, it makes you see the world from the eyes of people. It makes you understand why people act or behave the way they do. And it also makes you see how the world perceives you, which is strange, you know, because it, it's not like I've been there for a long time, but it's, it feels like I've been there for like thousands of years of psychotherapy you know it's right. you get to know you get to understand many many things and you get to witness the creation of of the universe and it's really hard to grasp you know on everything you know and, and come back with all the teachings that you um that you encountered but you really get to hold on to what you you need right now at this moment in time you know and, and um um I kind of, I kind of like, um, um, you know, um, I, I make a conscious effort now when, when I feel like my ego is getting in, in, in the way of a discussion or, you know, um, a conflict between, because whenever a conflict is happening, this is the sense of separation that I was telling you about, right? Whenever a conflict is happening or, um, you know, a disagreement happens. This is your ego in action. And if, if you make a conscious effort um, in suppressing your ego, you will find a way, you know, you, you will you will really find a way, you know, to, to find this common ground of understanding, uh, no matter what, you know, belief or culture or background that person comes from, you will find a way to, to come to a common ground of understanding. Um, eventually so it is going to be a tough mission i am expecting of course you know because we are human beings uh, i am expecting a lot of um attacks a lot of um you know um uh, i'm actually I, I actually don't know what to expect but i am expecting the worst uh but i'm ready for it i'm, I'm definitely ready for you know whatever comes my way because um you either deal with it or just let it happen and, and what's what's the purpose of letting it happen um and not doing anything about it if, if, if you feel that this is your purpose right right if this is your purpose and you feel like that you are on this planet to, to spread what you have discovered, you're gonna have yeah you're gonna have some fights you're gonna have some hurdles along the way you're gonna have a lot of people and also your own community look at you like you don't belong. Mm -hmm. But I think this has happened to a lot of people who who always thought different, who always um, perceive something differently. It doesn't make it bad. And your experiences has definitely affected you in a great deal. As you talk about, you can hear it in your voice as far as that connection you have made with whatever you made, right? And the continuation of, of your studying is going to be huge to, to your future, right? And also it's figuring out how to manage the reality of life, of what you're going to might experience from people compared to the spiritual world and the being that you really want to be. There's going to be a constant conflict of that. And, you know, like you said, you know, you're not sure what's going to come at you. And for all we know, everyone could be ecstatic and happy that you discovered this or just presented it in a different way, right? And giving people the knowledge that they need. Or they may look at you and say, hey, you're just another person who, who took a psychedelic drug. And you, you experienced a, a good high. Mm -hmm. Some people make it that basic, right? They would mm -hmm. try to water down, dilute 
your experience. Mm -hmm. As you as you continue to go through your journey, truly, what is your mission at this point? What is your you you still got purpose? This is your purpose, but now you you kind of have a mission that you have to go through now. What does that look like for you? Like, what, what have you defined that as of yet? It's it's to spread the word. You know, it's like um, re redefine the interpretations of um, religion and and spirituality and, and and our understanding of it. Um, this this is definitely something that I, I still have a lot of work to do, but I know that this is the direction I, I have to take. And uh, I know that it's my purpose to do something about it because nobody's doing anything about it in, in the way I want it to be, you know. And, and, and this is where I, I feel like this is my uh, duty, you know. It's it's um, it's something that I have to to shed light on. Um, so the the ultimate message is is to spread the word, you know, and, and this divine unity of you know consciousness of life. The universe, God, you know, we're we're all one. We all, um, we all, we, we all come from one source, and uh, this is the ultimate like direction I'm going to 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 head. You know, my message is going to um, revolve around this fact. Um, no matter what your belief system is, your cultural background. Um, I really don't care because what I've seen, whether it was like a psychedelic drug or spiritual experience, you know, it's it's um, it, it's something that happened to me that made me believe strongly about something, right? And um, for those for those who think that it's like a psychedelic drug or because I, I personally don't like to call it a psychedelic drug, you know, I, I refer to it as a plant medicine you know and, and um, sure. um and and um the reason it, the reason that it, it's it's not it's not a it's not a drug that you know um a, a lot of people a lot of people experience very similar effects to um near that experiences when they consume it you know and, and and it's something produced by our brains, for God's sake. You know, it's it's like right there in the penile gland. So it, it, it's something that is facilitated by 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 the plants. You know, the plant these plants have spirits, like animals do, like human beings do. So there's there's something much deeper than it being you know just a normal drug. You know, and, and there are lots of studies that share you know lots of different. Um, reports about you know all the shared and common experiences uh, when when such drug is is, um, is consumed when, when such plant is consumed um, and that also points to the fact that we are all like similar in one way like even like let's say for for argument's sake this was a drug and it, it caused this hallucinogenic effect why are we all experiencing the same thing does that point to the fact that we're all one so everything just keeps going back and pouring back to the fact that we all stem from from one consciousness whether it's our mind in action you know creating all these effects um or there is actually something out there that created all of, of you know the human experience out of this stream of consciousness but no matter which angle you 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 get to look at this from, you know, it's it's uh, it all points back to the fact that we are all one. Do you feel uh, that the younger generation, the new millennial generation, is really shying away from religion and trying to experience that spiritual energy or spirituality? <laughs> Yeah, and I, I, I don't blame them because their, their understanding of, of religion is completely distorted and, and uh, the way it's portrayed and reflected, you know, in this day and age is, is completely distorted and we're not doing religion justice in, in any way. And, and, and uh, um, for them to, for, for me to, to, like for me at least, to uh, get to the bottom of this, I had to read religion by my own and not, you know, 
um, get distracted by by all the teachings you know that we that was once dictated on us so if they don't do that themselves then i really don't blame them if, if they shy away from what we already know um because there's so many wrong things johnny like so many wrong things happening and so many wrong interpretations that leads us to more hate division wars and and this is the opposite of what religion is, is preaching it's it's the opposite of what what it's all about so why is it happening something's something's wrong you know some something wrong is happening if, if it's leading to that fact if it's leading to wars um conflict hate divisions then something is is wrong you know it's, it doesn't it's not rocket science right something is is wrong with the system no yeah i think you're right not rocket science i think also could possibly be maybe the system is correcting itself you know we have centuries of religion people are more educated now than ever before the knowledge is is there and then and again if, if back in you know, centuries ago they really preyed on on people who weren't knowledgeable of certain things it doesn't mean they were dumb or stupid they just weren't exposed to certain things so when you presented them this book this bible this religion they followed it it, it, it sounded right it's not that explained a couple of things they may have seen from the sky right and now you you have people reading the Quran, um, the, the, the the King James Bible, or the Old Testament uh, for Judaism, and you start questioning things like we discussed earlier. You know, you start hearing these stories and say, "Well, how come we didn't follow Greek mythology, but we follow this?" <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. How you know it was from folklore to the Bible saying this truth. Well, which one is correct? It's only what you actually believe in. If we wanted to go through Greek mythology and believe about Zeus and Nike and everybody else, we could have made that the Bible, correct? Right? Um, but we didn't. And to your point, like you know, we have the, the the scrolls and the lack of really defining what that was or whoever interpreted the first time around. Did they have that that third eye open when they did interpret it? What were the intentions in the beginning? Was it ill will? We would we'll never know, right? But these are all questions we have to discover and actually ask and say, why, are, especially in, in, here in the States, this becomes such a, a money pit. These what they call mega churches of 10,000 people going to a building and they're donating their money because the pastor wants a, a new plane <laughs> or drive a new car. And it's like, where is that from? You know, at this point, now you're taking advantage of the cattle. You know, you're looking at, at your people as cattle instead of saying, hey, these are spiritual beings that I need to help guide with my knowledge of being myself spiritual. And they're far from it. But then there's also those people who would harm people who would come up with ideals like yours or discoveries like yours, always writing books like yours. Because we do have fanatical people as well on both ends of the spectrum. You know, as, as we continue to, to, to be in this, in this blue earth and we're in the middle of space and we're just twirling, you know, we all just are pure stardust. We're connected, to, like you said, to the universe. I think that's, that's it. We're just connected to the universe. We have to be. We've chosen just not to be connected. We've chosen to unplug ourselves from whatever it was, because our ancestors were connected. You know, like I said, you know, as we grew and technology has taken over, it really has put in this kind of, this sheet in front of us that we just can't see beyond it. And then when we try to question it, and you peek behind the curtain a little bit, that you have, I think you, you know, definitely doing DMT and going through experience you did, you definitely peek behind the curtain. And you like what you found. And you're like, man, this is what I thought it would be. There's maybe nothing to experience before, like you said. You felt that that dark negative energy coming out of you. You felt like you were dying. That's that's a lot of shit for someone to kind of gather and make sense of it. You have a lifetime of data now. You have to filter through to find within yourself. And then for you willing to share your experience that's even that's bigger than life because other people need to hear this other people need to understand 
what spirituality really is or even what we're guiding them to is going to be grander than anything else that they're following from just some 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 book because the the, the bible again the, the bible speaks about prayer and all the religions do pray it has that common denominator and to me, like I said, prayer is energy. You're 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 gathering your energy for something, but no one knows exactly what the energy is supposed to do or where it's supposed to go. Or and what I, that's supposed to do. yeah, exactly. Like you know, you know, what's the purpose of me stopping to gather my energy to go where to who? You know, this energy is a, is a hot commodity. Where is it going? Who who is it going to? Who 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 does it belong to? Does it belong to me? Does it belong to you? Does my should I be sharing my energy with you and vice versa? Should we be having those type of of energy connections? You know, we always talk about how we are emotional beings and how women are more emotional than men, but men are taught not to be emotional, right? Men are taught to be tough and gladiator, and if you skint your knee, don't cry, be a man. And for the woman, oh, she's a girl. She's supposed to cry. She's she's supposed she's, and I sometimes feel women are more in touch with their intuition, right? They're more in touch of who they are because they're emotion that they were always allowed to be their emotional being, and men have always been just about their physical being, not their mm-hmm. internal. Does that make sense? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, males have actually been very much disconnected from from the true essence. As opposed to to women, who you know um, are they tend to be more spiritual. They they tend to be more uh, connected to their true essence than than males, unfortunately. Um, but you know this this whole connection is is very important, Johnny. And, and I, I guess you've touched on a very important point because um, it, it's about time. It's about time to make this connection. You know, it's like. I personally know that I have my own beliefs and you have your own beliefs that could be different. You know, they, they, they may not be the same, but we have found this common ground of understanding. You know, it's like we, 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 we manage to have a civil conversation and, and this is what human beings are supposed to be, you know, so we're supposed to have these civil conversations and, and, and uh, make this connection, feel good about, you know, the, 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 the kind of things we're talking about. Um, you have set objectives in, in, in your mind. I have set objectives in my mind and, and we managed to share our ideas uh, to serve that purpose. And, and, and uh, that's very important. You know, if, 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 if conflict happens, if, if you disagree in a point and conflict happens and then we hang up, you know, and what, what's, what's, what's the whole purpose? How, how, would I, how would I make these connections if, if I don't listen, if I don't extend my understanding to what, whatever is different than what I believe in? Yeah, and it's very label, important. Yeah, we can't label something right away we don't understand as crazy. And that's mm-hmm. what as humans as we do. If we don't understand it, we never experienced it, and we hear you talking different, right away you're labeled as, oh, this guy's a nut job. Mm-hmm. And that's far from the fact to your point. We have to listen, cipher out what you're saying. If I agree or disagree with you, that's up for me to determine what parts I disagree with and what parts I agree with. And I say, wow, okay, this made sense. Or you know what? This makes no sense to me because I'm heavy in my religion, whatever that may be. Mm-hmm. And I follow no religion right now at all. And, and I walk this earth right now in, in a constant state of trying to figure out what what am I here for? You know, it, it's beyond me just clocking in and clocking out for work. You know, it's 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 it's. And we talked about you know the DMT and how it you know made you go to your third eye, and artists, musicians, you know, painters, whoever, they tend to go to some type of drug, whether it's marijuana or alcohol, to to access their creativity. Right, and this has been known for for centuries, right? It is, and and you look at the now, you know, unfortunately, some of them go to the addiction because of it, but for them to be creative, they have to really tap into and release themselves from themselves to make that the best song that we may like, or you know, for them to be an actor or something like that, or if you are a painter or even a writer to come up with the best story you can come up with, you want to try to access 
some type of greater creativity, some type of higher essence of yourself. And that says something how that's a natural thing or an innate feeling that people feel they need to do to access something. And it could be just a, 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 a trip or a stumble to what you we're talking about today, about accessing your third eye, that accessing that other dimension that's going to really make you more in tune with the universe and yourself and, and where your guiding light should, should be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you, you've, you've said so many important points that I, that I want to, um, uh, you know, comment on. Um, first, first of all, there, there are so many um, different opinions about, you know, religion, and it's perfectly normal to to have different opinions. But Johnny, there there's so much truth in every single religion, in every single holy book that you you read. You you will find so many truth, so many different teachings that are legitimate. You know, it's it it, it does help and serve humanity. And and um, what I'm trying to say here is that um, if you live by you know um, trying to understand and extend your understanding to what's different from you by not negating anything that could possibly be true, you will go a long way. You will go far, you know, and and that's what I'm doing. You know, it's like, that's, that's why, like, if someone comes at me, you know, and they're like, you know, you have like weird set of beliefs and, 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 um, we're, we're not entirely agreeing with you. I'm like, I'll be like, uh, okay, but, I never disagreed with you, you know. I, I never actually disagreed with with anyone. With and 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 there's so much power in that, you know, because um, every single person has their own truth. We 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 all had different experiences. We all we were all exposed to different experiences. Hence, we all have different truth. You know, it's no one has. The exact same truth as, as even if even if that person is your brother and was raised in, in the same household, you will not hold the same truth because you were exposed to different experiences. Um, so no one's in a supreme position to impose an absolute truth on anyone. No one's in a supreme position to do that. Therefore, we need to understand that there's a dynamic, you know, flow of understanding that has to take place um, in order for us to to reach this unity, which I personally believe is the ultimate purpose of, of humanity to, you know, connect and reconnect and unite, you know, and, and there's only one way to do that. And it's to listen and to extend your understanding as to what's different from you. Um, I have, I may have different beliefs than you, but it doesn't mean that my beliefs are right and your beliefs are wrong. But if I do listen to what you have to say and understand that this is your truth and this is my truth, then we have already, you know, started a a, a common ground of understanding, right? Absolutely, absolutely. I think it comes down to a lot of things as where, especially you know, um, the Western world is so young. And, and so kind of immature compared uh, to the rest of the world, right? Because it's, it's the rest of the world was around for centuries before. And you see people making kind of migrations to India to, to learn yoga, but they come back here and make it into a damn exercise and throw away all the spiritual part about yoga. You know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, what are we doing to ourselves? Right. And, um, it's almost like we just continue to fight ourselves against our innate feeling, knowing that something is there. It's like we're almost af- afraid to recognize, yeah, th- there may be something there. And if I ignore it, I don't have to face it. So I should be good. I should be fine. And you might even wind up coming, or you should be coming better on top of it because now you're actually exposing yourself. You're opening yourself up to all these different type of energies and people and you get to learn and explore. And that's what this platform is for. That's what this, I create this podcast for. And that's why, you know, I don't, I don't call it a podcast. I call it Johnny Nomad Presents because I'm presenting someone's story. It's, it's about you. It's about other people listening to real life people, not, 
huge famous mega stars, but to real people doing real things, having real thoughts, concerns, you know, manifestations of, of items and presenting it and having a platform to present it on. Which you we we have been talking about today is something that everyone has actually questions or goes through. Or that person who does, you know, end up in a hospital, then they start praying for God then. And they never probably prayed for God before ever in their life. They felt something. They're afraid of something, of happening. If they was in touch with the spiritual being, being, they know when it's time for them to pass, they'll feel comfortable with that. Because they have accessed that side already, like, like you have, right? By, by, by going to Peru, experiencing DMT, going through the hell that you said you went through, vomiting this, 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 this evil essence coming out of you, like, like black tar coming out of you. That's huge. You know, that, you know it sounds, sounds crazy, but it sounds intriguing. It sounds like, wow, this, this does make sense. All the things we ingest, not just, you know, consumption as food, but just thoughts, visuals. We were exposed to as children, to adulthood, to regions of the world. We're ingesting all of this and, and, and we're a sponge. We're keeping it. We don't know how to release it. Mm-hmm. And when we don't know how to release it, it comes into anger, to war, to confusion, not understanding, debating, but debating to a point just to, to win, not to really gain knowledge. Does that make sense? Absolutely, absolutely. All of this is just cultural programming, John. Like, yeah. um, that, and it's no wonder why why kids are more connected to their essence, their true essence, and 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 uh, their true nature, and you know the the whole belief in like uh, an intelligence or divine uh, presence. You know, they they tend to believe more in that. You know, because they're they're just untouched by society that is as simple as that you you, you, see, you get to see the unconditional love in action with with kids you know it's like they're they're um all playing together whether they have like different skin color different religions different cultural backgrounds you don't really get to feel the differences they're really in touch with their human essence it only um um, like the opposite happens as they grow older, right? And and uh, why does that happen? Because they're they're just injected with these ideologies and social filters and right. and cultural programming. That's that's exactly what happens. So something something's wrong with with the whole system, with the whole um, you, you know the whole the, the way society is, is functioning is, is definitely disoriented. No, it is. I gotta say, here in the states, it's it's you see us here unraveling, you know, we are, are truly just unhinging on ourselves right now. Um, there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of uh, insecurity that's coming up. There's, um, you know, race debates all the time. And if we were ever to really be so-called America and, and be all Americans and not separate everyone, Right, we can actually win, and and winning as far as understanding of who we are as as a people, right? That goes for any country, honestly. You know, you have some 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 countries out there who are who run their 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 country based off religious beliefs. It works. Sometimes it doesn't work. You have us here, who's all about capitalism and so-called democracy. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. You know, you have communist countries, dictatorships. There's no really one way to lead people, but when you are leading people, what is the greater purpose for leading this group of people? Is it just for you to be on the mountaintop? And you have all these subjects just kind of watching you? Again, you know, our, to your point about ego, your ego was let go, like you said. And when you have all these dictators or leaders, it's all about the ego. I'm the boss. I'm the, I'm the one. I'm the you know, boss. And boss. yeah, and it's it becomes to say now that energy that they get is a negative energy of power. It's not the energy of community. 
of our humanity at that point. If we really were truly concerned about one another, there won't be poverty. Everyone would be rich, not, not in, the, in a monetary sense, but in a spiritual sense. No one would go without food or water. We would figure those things out. If we can figure out how to put people in space with no computers, we can figure out how to get someone water and food every single day. We just don't want to. It's not, it's not monetized. <laughs> you know, unless I create an ad on a, on, a, on a pipe inside the road for, for water, why would I want to, you know, put a spigot that's from underneath the ground to give someone water for? It's, um, it comes like that with your spiritual essence too. When you have no, no, no understanding, if you go through years of childhood, you know, to your adulthood, young, your, as, as a young man or young lady, of going to a church or a synagogue or a mosque, and you just taught to do this, but then when you ask questions, the answer is, is, is just because. You just have to. This, this is it is what it is. Just do what you're told. That's what happens to me. When, yeah, that's what happened to me when I was questioning my catechism. I was in Catholic school and I did my communion confirmation. I, you know, we were actually working out of workbooks, not even out of the Bible. And I was asking questions, and the nuns didn't like the questions. It's like you just gotta follow what we tell you. And I'm like, but uh, this doesn't seem right to me. This, you know. You're saying don't pray to the Ten Commandments. Say don't you know don't pray to another god or or statue. Inside the Catholic Church, there's nothing but statues everywhere. <laughs> right? You 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 pray to other saints. So I was really conflicted about well, what are we doing here? You no, know, we're told to follow these Ten Commandments, but then we do the total opposite on this side. And that that's when I shied away from religion. Being atheist, I think it's a strong word. I've used it in the past myself because I didn't understand what I was. I didn't understand exactly how to define, I guess, my question on my spirituality. And not until recently, I have to say, is when I really figured out that, you know what? It's not so much I don't believe in a God. I just need to find out where my true source of energy is coming from. Somewhere mm -hmm. similar to what you did. And mm -hmm. really get in tune with myself, whether that's meditation. You know, and meditation can mean a lot of things. You can either be in a room quiet by yourself, or you can just be solely alone with some music in your head and zone out and maybe a good book. It, maybe it's a quiet space outside on the bench looking at the river or mountaintop and but you have to find that time of peace so your body could reconnect with with the earth again we have so many distractions whether it's with 24-hour news of just bad shit you get to consume right to the type of foods that we consume as well humans making bad food for humans makes no sense to me like but we do that all this processed foods, right? You would think this human will understand that we should be eating good stuff, but they don't. And just to the average things that you may need to survive, you know, you need a roof over your head, you need light. All those things are monetized. You have to obviously work to keep those things over your head and on. And it messes with our frequencies. It messes with our judgment. It messes with our purpose in life of either are we just creative beings and should just or should we just be that? And that's a question I always come up with. That's when I started this to say, I just can't continue my life working, working, working to give my kids or the next generation advice and say, hey, you know what? If you work really hard, you can may have a decent life and just make it to where if you really focus on who you're trying to be and educate yourself. And sometimes that means formal schooling. Sometimes that means not formal schooling. You go into Peru, that's not formal schooling. That's more of an engagement of a worldly type that you cannot get no place else. That's something that you have to go sort after. I think every human should go on a spiritual journey. I think we should be, you know, paid to do it. <laughs> like, Here's for your travels, 
do this for the next two or three years. Let's see how you come back. <laughs> Let's see how you can it, contribute to society. Or have it as part of the curriculum, right? Absolutely. Like that should be preached from, from day one. But we don't. We, 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 we teach people based off the needs of what's going to come next. Right? So if, if, if we're building something new on this earth, okay, we need to train people just for that. Has nothing to do with our, spirit, our spiritual being. Has nothing to do with us questioning about the energy that comes from the universe and how we're part of this universe. Um, we're so centric about we think we're the only thing happening in the universe. And there's many things happening. There's bigger things than us that we don't understand. We haven't got to experience yet. And like I said for myself, I, I did drop religion, but I never disrespected it. I never just said, hey, you may believe in that, you're an idiot. I never came up with that. If you believe that, that's fine. You can practice it, whatever you want to practice. Allow me to practice what I want to practice. And if it's like we're talking about, you know, right now it's more being more spiritual, allow me to practice that. And if you have a question about it, have no problem answering that question. The same way if I have a question for, to a Jewish man, a Jewish woman about their religion, they should be respectful enough to understand I'm being respectful. Give me an understanding as far as why. I want a deeper conversation, deeper not understanding of what's going on. You know, and, and to your point earlier about, you know, religion has started wars for centuries, hundreds of years. People have been fighting the same war, but no one knows why they started. They've come up with their own reasons why for their generation is why they're fighting. Right, because the last generation told them something, but that's also been diluted time and time again. But what what started the fight? What was it over? <laughs> really, you know, was it a misunderstanding, a miscommunication, just some some people hating on each other because someone had more sheep than the other person? <laughs> you know, so it, it comes down to that. It seems like history is repeating itself. Huh? Because we allow it to, we, we tend to continue to do the same thing just with different technology. You know, we, we haven't, we have, we refuse for some reason to learn from our mistakes. And, and, and like we've, we're, we're creatures of evolution. We, if we look at any other animal out there in nature, if we look at the, at, at, at the bee, they make beehives and they make the same beehive every single time they don't modify it we're always on this modification state we're always evolving something every single year you can get a brand new phone right a different phone it's not the same phone it has something new a better chip a better camera a better something tvs get thinner and thinner the resolution gets higher and higher now we're going from a light bulb to leds right um, no other animal on this planet does that, but we do. We haven't found something that says this just works. Let's just keep it and work with it. We get so employed by having the next thing that we tend to lose ourselves completely in this planet. And our time is short. When you're in your 20s, you don't realize how much time you have. You just say, I'm young. I got this. When you hit 40, things start looking kind of different. <laughs> you start pretty much saying, I got half my life left. What am I going to do with it? How am I going to contribute? Every day I'm thinking, how am I going to contribute to my community? How, how am I going to be a better human? You know, yesterday I passed a woman as I was going down my steps from my apartment, I said, good morning. She looked at me and just kept, kept walking, didn't just respond back. Maybe she thought I was hitting on her. I was just trying to say good morning. But the perception has been so, I guess she's gone through that so much. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So but all that being said, like her spiritual being is, is done. She's like, I don't even want to engage with another human because I've been attacked or hurt or disparaged against. And that's where 
having a spirituality and understanding that spirituality and engaging with people in such a good way and sharing your energy, your genuine energy is going to be a game changer. And it should be. Will people do it? It's going to take time. I think, like I said, this new generation is different, you know, um, especially at least in America, like people, especially in big cities are less and less religious now. Um, in the rural areas, they still hold on to religion. But again, it's not about spirituality. It's just about reading some scriptures from a book. It's almost like following an instruction booklet at this point. There's really no true connection to it. And you go into the same person that's been preaching to you every Sunday for the past 30 years. What have you really learned? Because I think churches should be leading you to spirituality. They should be sure. encouraging you to go and say, hey, this may be your starting point, but this is not your ending point. I don't want to see you here for the next 20 or 30 years. Definitely come by and visit so you can educate the other parishioners. But you shouldn't just be sitting in the pews as a student for 30 years and never become a teacher. Does that make sense, true. you know? True. That, that makes perfect sense, actually. Yeah. Um, would, you, would you say that you're, you're, um, you're gearing more towards being agnostic uh, than an atheist? Or, or, or absolutely. Atheist? No, absolutely, because um, I don't know. No one knows. You know, I think our, our perception of, of, a, of one, a man, an old man being somewhere in the sky, I think is completely freaking wrong, right? Especially in America, it's a white man, <laughs> right? So that's, what, that's, that's the pictures that we see, right? I, like I said, I do believe there's an energy. We've been put here on Earth for something. We're so different compared to any other animal on this planet, right? Where every other animal has learned how to survive in nature. And we have to build things to really give ourselves shelter and cultivate the land to make sure we have proper food. And I do think there's a, definitely a higher power. I do think, I think there's an energy out there that's super strong. Um, I think we're just in a corner of the universe where we have, just haven't been seen. That's what I do believe. You know, do I believe there's other maybe beings out there? Yeah, I don't think we're alone. I think that'd be crazy for us if we could think we're that special in the vast universe that we're the only ones around. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's just, it's just come on common sense. Like, it's almost like if I'd never left America, I would say there's no one else on the, on the other side of the ocean. <laughs> mm -hmm. Only here. It's the same difference with space, with energy. So yeah, definitely I'm more agnostic because again, I don't know. But I had to learn I was agnostic because agno being ag you're not taught about being agnostic. It, it's always one or the other. There's never no that, that middle ground. It's either you believe or you don't believe. Yeah. And, when you, and when you say you're unsure about something, people tend to look at you and say, well, you have to pick a side. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's so relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, well, I don't want to pick a side because it's a journey. Sure. It's a, exactly. Like this journey is, is so much now getting a definition. It's really about the process and finding out who's the best person I want to be. And if I ever find out if, if the energy is real or this God is real or not, it's, it's really not the point. The point is about inside me. The point is about how I live this short life that we have. And when I pass, then I guess the, my next session of spiritual life outside this physical form will be another journey I have to go through. Mm -hmm. And maybe it will, I'll get closer to that higher energy, right? And maybe that's what we're here for. Maybe we're, we're meant to pass away because our energy is needed in the universe. And that's how the universe works. There's so many different ways you can go by it. And, you know, like I said, like picking a side, winning and losing, good versus evil. You know, I just, I just want to be unsure. I want to study. I want to get to meet great people like yourself. 
that can educate me more, that can pass knowledge to me, make me question things. I may not agree with everything you're, you're saying. I may say, well, I, just, I agree with a lot of stuff you're saying. But again, that's for me to, to decide inside and revisit a lot of things. And that's the great thing about having communication. And we're totally two, two, we're just strangers talking on a random day, right? And that's the beauty right. of it, how we can have a simple conversation, no yelling, screaming, cursing at one another, just having a true conversation about, hey, what was your experience? What's your story? Mm-hmm. And, and that's what we don't do enough of, listen to people's stories. Because everyone has one. I was molested and raped at 11 years old. And that affected me my entire life. And it wasn't until my later years where I was able to just disclose that. Right? Mm-hmm. Everybody has a story. You can't assume someone's an asshole right away because they're acting like such. You got to find out why they're acting like that. Like I said, that the lady I said good morning to yesterday, she could have just broke up with her boyfriend. She could have just maybe lost a parent. Don't know. Right? But I didn't right away just curse her and say, ah, oh, women. No, I was like, okay, wow. Well. Kept it going. As long as I know I did my part to pass my energy on, hey, good morning. Simple acts of kindness has to keep on keeping on. We can't afford to have people deter people who want to be nice. If I'm going to the local Dunkin' Donuts or McDonald's or whatever, I'm going to go ahead and pay for the person behind me. Just to give it back. Just to say, you know what? I don't know what their life is like. That have met, may have just been the last 20 bucks that they're spending. They may be, she may be a single mom or a couple of kids working two jobs and she just can't afford it. You just don't know when you have a simple act of kindness like that and you share your energy with someone what that could, that turnout could be. You know, as you said, as you go through your journey and you go through this process and you find your purpose, I need you to be louder and deafening with your purpose so everyone can hear exactly what your thoughts are. Every platform, every opportunity you have, you have to present your story given. You have to make that a goal for yourself every single day. Where and how can I share my story? Who is willing to listen to my story? And the ones who aren't, who don't want to listen, that's fine. Well, who's, who are the people who do want to listen to my story? It's going to get to them regardless. You're right. They're going to hear of it or hear of you regardless of anything, whether they like it or not. There's just things I don't want to hear about but it still gets to me somehow, right? No matter how much I want to avoid something, it still, it still gets to you. You attract it to you. Exactly. And yeah, I, 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 I do believe the law of attraction. I think you, you, you really do put out what you get out there. It's, it's pro- to me, at least to me, it's proven. Other people may say, hey, need some more scientific proof. To me, growing up the way I grew up in Brooklyn, in the, in the projects, in the ghetto, you saw drug dealers do bad things that energy they had brought more bad things to them because they, they were working and living in a, in a, in a world of just evil energy. And then what I have seen, which I do have to give up to religion, I've seen drug dealers, even former drug addicts, use religion to better themselves. I have seen religion help the impoverished people. So I have seen that as well. I'm not going to say religion is just a bad thing. You do see good things happening, but I think that's more from the person behind it than, than, yeah, than the religion practice itself, right? Again, we talked about interpretation and how we, you know, I definitely believe that it's been interpreted wrong since the beginning. You know, as we find this out now and continue to move forward and, and try different things and get to really understand, you know what, as we have all this technology, we need to strip it away and get back to bare bones and connect and, and hug a damn tree. What is that? You know, a tree is living. Does it have a brain? Does it have a heart? Does not bleed? 
but it's alive. Leaves fall from it during the to the fall time. It grows back again in the springtime. They have pollen. They're mating some happy way. They're alive. We just can't think of life as we feel it and see it. We have to look at everything as life. Even, even a rock, a rock emits energy. It's dormant. It's there. It needs to be released. All right? But that's, this is where we have to understand about the planet and the earth we live in. <clears throat> everything on here has energy. Whether that's dark energy or <laughs> that's good energy. Right? Just like how scientists have like this dark matter. It's good matter. All right? It's, it's, a, it's, yeah. It's, it's like, you know, this, it's, it's an understanding that we do have some type of connection. I do love science because science is very factual. It's data. And they, they don't really come down to an answer until they actually find an answer for it. And science is really cool to me because they, they tend to say, I don't know, or we don't know. We could assume we have a theory and we're going to try to prove this theory. Or we're going to try to see if this theory is wrong. And you have different scientists combating theories to find out exactly what comes out to be true. With religion, it's very finite. It's just, nope, this is it. That's not how it's supposed to be, though. Right. Like, religion is not supposed to be finite. It's not supposed yeah. to you know, uh, have answers to everything. It's supposed to be as ambiguous as science. And, and, uh, you know, that's, that's how it's supposed to be. Um, but unfortunately, unfortunately, that's not how it's reflected, right? And yeah. That's why a lot of people just decided to drop it and, and, and look somewhere else. Um, yeah. But I, 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 I by the way, I, I would recommend that you um, look into the life of uh, Dr. Eben Alexander. Okay. He's, uh, he's um, or he was an uh, atheist. Um, he's a new neurosurgeon, Harvard, Harvard graduate uh, neurosurgeon. Uh, and he went through a near-death experience. And uh, right after his near-death experience, you know, it was a very similar experience to what I had. Um, and right after that, he wrote a, a book called The Proof of Heaven. Um, it, it's quite interesting, you know, how, how he perceives, um, you know, life and religion and science and the connection uh, to spirituality. Um, it, it's, 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 it's an eye-opener. It's an eye-opener, definitely. Um, and... But back back to your point, you know, where where some societies thr thrive, you know, because of uh, uh, being, you know, I don't know, capitalists. Some some thrive by being communists. There, there is no formula to to success. There is no formula. There is no one answer to everything, right? Right. Uh, on the contrary, actually, like, do you know um, the the most country that is practicing. Um, and this is according to a study made by a British uh, researcher. The, 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 the number one country practicing the Islamic teachings uh, is Ireland, uh, followed by Scandinavian countries, which, which th these countries are secular, right? Like they're not, right. they, they don't even believe in God, yet they follow. Um, the Islamic teachings, you know, not, not the practices, but the teachings, you know, the, the religion was trying to preach. And the first Islamic country on the list was Malaysia, and it came in 33rd uh, on, on that list. So, wow. again, you know, this is a very strong statement, you know, there, there's, there's a lot, you know, to, to, to take out of this. And there, there is no one formula. There, there is no right and wrong. You know, there is just like you either search for the truth, or you don't. You either know or you don't know. There is no right and wrong. You, you just either know or you don't know. You're right. You, you can live and just you can just you could just exist if you want to, and that's and if that's your prerogative, then that's fine too. You know, I, I, not everyone has to be religious. Now everybody needs to go through a spiritual journey. Um, I do suggest it. <laughs> but, you know, 
if you just want to wake up every day and just sit there and exist, you can do so. You have every right to, you know, and, and I think being human is a great thing. Even the chance for us to even be alive right now and talk to each other is very random, right? Um, it's not never guaranteed. And um, it, that's something that we have to really, I think, appreciate more. Because no matter what you do, tomorrow is going to come with or without you. The sun is going to rise again. The earth is going to continue spinning. And what are you doing with your time? As I, as I reevaluate myself and my, my, and my past and my career, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything, but I wish I was probably more informed when I was younger so I can make different decisions sooner to really capitalize on my, on my youth and take journeys, take chances and risk that I was never taught. Not until I started reading more and more and started educating myself in different ways and, and engaging with different people is when things started turning for me and say, hey, no, it's time for you to just take a chance and, and not follow the traditional worker bee path. The, you know, climbing the corporate ladder, as they say, right? And why not climb the spiritual ladder? Why not try to find out what you feel and what you're, what you're really meant to be here for? I have children, I have a wife, I'm really happy. But it's always that one thing that you want to, you just feel like something's missing that you have to make that connection. Now I don't want it to be a forever journey of me just missing something. I also want to be present enough to say, hey, I found it as well. This is it. I never want to question when it comes to me, oh, this is it. It's something bigger, right? You have to appreciate that the smaller things are probably grander than the biggest thing because they're really going to hit you upside your head, right? You taking the chance with, with going to Peru, alone you going to another country, taking DMT, <laughs> going through that experience that's some other people would say that's so dangerous that's so not the norm are you are you insane i would say damn that was courage that was you looking for freedom that was that was, that was you really, really saying i'm gonna be the best man i can be and right now i need this to continue on you found that to level up in your spirituality, you had to go do that. Mm -hmm. I was that searching was for, for answers. Absolutely. That, and that was for you. That was what you particularly needed. And no one can discount that. No one can take that away wow. from you. They could talk shit about it. They can't take it away from you. You know? Not at all. I, I, think, I think you're brilliant. I really do. I think, you know, what, what, you're, what you're providing is definitely more questions for people to ask, which is great. That's what people need to have. People need to be asked more questions and challenge themselves. And I think that's exactly what you're presenting here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, this is definitely uh, what I'm planning to do next, you know, and uh, find every single opportunity to present and voice my, my intentions and, and, um, and objectives preset objectives, you know, and, and, and um, it, it's, it's something that I, I will continue on, on doing for, for sure. Thank you for providing this opportunity to, to um, share my experience. No, of course. Uh, my goal is to speak to people all over the world. And um, I didn't think I could last year. I, I started this podcast by myself, talking to myself. <laughs> and um, I wound up Waking up one night, I did have a dream that I was, my dream was that I was in person talking to people, almost like, like a documentary style, just getting a story, just having a basic conversation in someone's living room. And I was like, well, I can't do that right now. What's the next best thing I can do? Let me find people that's willing to come on. And I wasn't trying, yeah, and, and that's what I did. I, I actually went on Instagram and I wasn't looking for somebody who had a hundred thousand followers or a million followers. It was about 
real stories, stories I was interested in as well, stories I can learn from. This is my university right here. All my guests are my professors. All my guests have taught me something. No matter what stage or difficulty or happiness that they have in their life, they, every person I've sp- spoken to has, has left an impression on me. And that's what I'm going for. This is, this is my way of, of, of educating myself and learning and expanding my, my thoughts and challenging my, my, my thinking and making it grander. And as I continue to go on, my goal for next year is to hopefully maybe I'm with you face to face and we are talking Hello. in the living room, you know, recording it and, and reminiscing how we had this exchange and um, going after your experience as you further go through your experience and talk about that next level you're hitting. I know that's going to happen. Cause I'm going to make that happen. I'm going to put that energy out there as we've been speaking about energy and what is your next move? The book is out, right? People are out. You need to go to Amazon. It's on Amazon. You need to go ahead and buy it. Um, I have my copy coming. Um, what is the next move that you're doing? Okay. So um, I'm planning to write um, about my experience after, you know, the DNT because the, the, the book really... Um, um talks about you know my experience before uh personally experiencing dmt it's based on research of course and and and, um now i'm planning to write about my own experience and how you know um i i can connect it on a personal level and and um make it resonate with with people more you know on, on a more intimate level um and also i i i'm going i'm planning to you know um do some book tours and and talk more about you know uh my my objectives and and goals through the book tours you know and and, um um through conferences and and i'll basically take every single opportunity to to voice my intentions and plans you know through these platforms um i'm also going to put together a lot of studies um that can support you know the 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 evidence presented in the book you know it's um it's trying to bring both worlds together that the worlds of science and religion science and spirituality is very important but i need a lot of evidence to support that you know something as simple as you know um providing all the studies that prove for example that meditation um, help induce the DMT in your brain, you know, to, to, you know, facilitate more dreams and, and, um, uh, reach that state of nirvana, like the, the yogis explain it is, but there has to be like scientific evidence to support all that, you know, um, this is what I'm going to, 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 to do basically. It's like trying to bring together every single information I can get my hands on, um, to support the message I'm, I'm trying to send across. Well, you have a supporter here. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I de- you definitely got a supporter here, man. Um, we have to, uh, we have to stay connected. I, I actually stay connected with all my guests. I check up on all my guests. I support all my guests. So you have my support a thousand percent, man. You Thank mean? you so much. Thank you so all much, John. This has been am- amazing. Now, I really appreciate you coming on and, and sharing your story. I think this is an amazing story that opens up a lot more questions. And I definitely want to have you a guest in the future. Uh, so we can, you know, talk in more in depth about this and um, really give it again to your book even more um, and about your new book at that as well. So hopefully that'd be the first place you come here to talk about your new book. <laughs> so, as it comes out and hey anytime you feel like you need to just get something off your chest hit me up we'll put you on a, it won't be a problem thank you so much that's that's uh that's a pleasure actually uh meeting a person like you and, and uh, it's been an honor um talking you know and voicing my my opinion in, in your show um and i'm pretty sure you'll go far man like w- w- what you're doing is is, is is amazing and for everything there's a start you know and, and uh, who knows 
who knows where where this uh, where this can go. I'm just focusing on the stories, you know. Um, and you're clearly passionate about what you're doing as well. So yeah, you know. I am, and and I, I study, I read, and to make sure if I don't know something, I, I say I don't know, and you know, I study up on uh, on my guests and. I truly follow my guests and, you know, um, my, my goal, I just got home you know, from work at four o'clock in the morning to have our, our podcast at 11 a.m. So sleep was not <laughs> non-existent. I am passionate about it. I feel like this is my purpose to really give some type of platform to brown and black people. Honestly, mm-hmm. I think that it's mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, a, I'm Hispanic, I'm Puerto Rican from New York, and just giving other people opportunities, especially to be heard from different cultures from around the world at that, and not just being a single track minded or staying in your lane that they say, I hate that saying, stay in your lane. I don't want to want to stay in the lane. I want people to erase the lines, be brave. Mm-hmm. If you want to get off the exit, figure it out, get it off the exit and explore. If you want to get back on the highway and continue your, your journey, get back on then. You know, um, but we need to really show the next generation that exploration within themselves, within this world, within their country, challenging their own people and culture to think different, to be different. Um, and sometimes maybe you don't challenge it because maybe it does work. Maybe because that's who your culture is and that's what it is and it works out fine. You That's what you love about it. Um, but just to expand your culture and evolve it to a way that makes sense, Right. Uh, not just for you, but for many other people. The platform is for the people, and that's what I have it for. Johnny Noah presents the platform for the people. And um, it was, it's going to be here. Um, it's going to be here for a long time, as I, like I said. And I make no money from it. It's not even about me making money from it. It's about me really gaining knowledge from these stories. I enjoy it. I want to make sure everyone else enjoys it. And um, so they can learn from it and go from there. You know, if I can... If I could one day get paid just so I can do this, wow, that'd be amazing. I can leave my job and I can just focus on this and have more guests, more stories, and really make this my my nine to five. And I would I would love to do that on a consistent basis. But right now I gotta share my energy in many different ways. <laughs> plant the seed, man. Plant the seed and it will manifest one day. Absolutely. Absolutely. You gotta have goals and you just have to have a lot of execution behind it. Right, a goal with no execution is just a dream. So, um, definitely gonna go ahead and continue the execution of it. And like I said, I, I, I'm gonna follow you, support you, um, and make sure that you know if you ever need a, a, a ear for venting, you know, pleasure or displeasure, you just hit me up, man. I got your back on that. Thank you so much, John. So it's been a pleasure, man. It's been a pleasure. yeah. Th- thank you, man. I held you up long enough. Thank you for coming on. And um, audience, you have to get this book. Please uh, show your book one more time. Make sure we get that up there. And speak so the say say so the, the camera could go back on your book again. Say what? What's the title of your book? Uh, Beyond the Prison of Belief. There you go. And they can get they can get on Amazon. Yeah. They can get it on Amazon, uh, Barnes and Noble, um, lots of different platforms. It's it's actually on sixteen different platforms, so it's like everywhere. You got to make it audible because I'm I'm into audibles now. So yeah, yeah, I, I am planning to do that. I, I am planning to work on that actually. Yeah, you need to because um, that's why I do what I work out now. I'm listening to audio books when I'm working out. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll, I'll put that into consideration. I, I was actually considering that. And uh, I definitely look forward to hear your, your opinion about the book. You know, it's, uh, Absolutely. It's, it's, on, it's on the way. It should be here, I believe, on Tuesday. So um, I can't wait to get it, read it. And um, it's, I said, 100% support. So you have, a, you so have a good man. Thank you so much for joining the Johnny Nomad Presents. And today we presented spirituality with Ahmad. Thank you so much. Thank man. you, John. I appreciate you. All right, man. stay in touch. Yeah, will do. Right. Will do. Bye.